Today we're getting an update on the Red Sea Nano Reef Rock Flower Tank. What's going on guys? Devin from Reef Dudes. Now if you guys are new to the channel, make sure you guys hit the subscribe button and that bell because we put out new videos every single Monday on different reefing topics. We do a live stream every Wednesday afternoon. Now today, I've had a ton of people asking me over the last few weeks for an update on the Nano, so today is the day we're finally gonna do it. Now the tank is lit by an AI Prime HD. This little guy has been doing an awesome job on the tank. Uh, I've been running this for about a year and a half almost now. Um, the mesh top is a bit of a DIY one, so I just use the window screen material and those little flange corners. Um, I have done videos on DIY mesh tops, if you want to know how to build them, check that out. And the mesh that I use is actually for veils or dresses or something like that from the fabric store. I believe it's called Tui. So you can look and just find a super thin one. It's very unintrusive. You barely notice it on. So I prefer open top tanks. So I figure having something that you barely notice is the way to go. Uh, I've got the nice little frag racks on the side. These guys blend in very well, especially they're getting covered in Coraline now. And if you get that top down view, there's tons of rock flowers in the tank which I absolutely love. So this tank is slowly turning into an all rock flower tank. And my goal is kind of to have the whole sand bed absolutely just covered in flowers eventually. And I think that's going to look amazing. It's not too far off. Um, I picked up quite a bit and they are starting to fill out and really start to grow. Um, you might notice I did have a scully there. I actually did take that one out. The rainbow Monty was starting to sting it. So the flesh was receding a little bit on that one side. So I did take that guy out and moved it to the nano. And I actually tried placing it on the side of the wall, so I'm curious to see how that guy does there. But you can see that little bit of little bit of skeleton on the top, right? If the coral beauty moves. Uh, a little bit of skeleton on the top is where it was getting stung, so that's why that guy got moved. So back to this tank itself. Um, the rock flowers are doing awesome. Everyone's happy. Majority have stayed on the sand bed. Um, a few have started to move up the rock. So you can see we got. We got one guy right below the other chaos. We got another one actually pretty much touching it. We got a green one on top and another one over there. So those of you guys have walked up the rocks, we come over to the side. That was one of my original babies and he's starting to be a decent size. So look at him, he's doing pretty good now. So he's growing, he's happy. And this was another baby that's starting to get to a decent size now. One little flower walked up and one over there. So a few have slowly started to climb the rocks, but overall, for the most part, considering there's about 50 in there, most have stayed on the sand bed. I still do have another little baby under one of those little edges there. So I've got three or four for sure. I still kind of theorize there is another one or two somewhere back there, um, but they do move around a bit. So sometimes it's hard to keep track of them. So, so far I'm kind of curious to see, like that guy is getting all nice and friendly with the utter chaos. So I was curious to see how the zoas and the rock flowers can interact together. Well, this guy is, he looks like a wall hammer almost. It's just like all these heads. So it's eventually going to split into a bunch, but that guy's looking pretty cool. Loving him. Um, acros are all obviously doing pretty well. These guys are getting pretty big after, you know, the year, year and a half they've been in the tank. So lots of great growth. Let's see if we can kill the flow for a minute. And it's going to unplug the ATO so it doesn't yell at us. Um, so one thing you guys may notice is I actually have a different ATO in here now. Um, I have my DOI one, which I used for a year plus, year and a half. And the motor on it started getting a bit squeaky. So it's getting a bit loud. So I actually decided to try one of the Auto XP ones or XP Aqua. So my buddy had one of these and it was like next to dead silent. So I decided to try it and so far really impressed with it. Um, super duper quiet, which is awesome. Now also look in here, these definitely need a refill. I know they're getting low, so Elks is about empty, so we'll have to refill these guys. So we might do a bit of maintenance today. We'll mix up some new chemicals, which show you guys how I do that. And we'll also do a little quick water change to show you guys kind of how quick and easy it is to do on a smaller nano reef. So we've got all the flow off in the tank, get a little bit of a top down view. Now I haven't vacuumed the sand bed in a long time in this tank and that's mainly just because there's any rock flower babies in there. I don't want to have any risk of sucking any of them up. So just for that purpose alone, haven't vacuumed it to fix that little dry spot. But I'm really happy with how the flowers are filling in the sand bed. You know, most of this top down is just flowers and I absolutely love that. So as they kind of take over, you know, I may start taking out other corals. We'll kind of see how they interact. Uh, the little purple one, you got the Jason Fox Acid Reflux and the Scrambled Egg Zoas. Those guys are starting to grow out fairly well. 
Another one I'm kind of stoked for, that guy, it is called White Zombie, and I bought that at the Niagara Coral Show in February, so I've had the one head for ages and I finally got a second head, so pretty stoked for that guy. Now for actually doing maintenance on the ta tank, first step, always put down a towel. You know, the odds are you're likely going to spill something, so just be a little proactive and put that towel down. Uh, next we got our empty bucket to suck out the water. I got my bucket of new salt water. Uh, always good measure as well to test the tank, make sure your salinity is correct. Test your bucket to top off water. Again, make sure it matches what your tank is. Um, or if it's a little bit off, you can use that to just make sure you correct it to the right parameters. So make sure your salt water matches. Next, my pump return pump's already off. If you don't want to get your mouth full of salt water, you can always just insert your tube into the tank and let it fill itself with water and get the air out. So rather than sucking on it, you're just going to use the gravity of that siphon to start sucking it out. So. Another big trick is too, having a nice thick hose is gonna help you suck out a lot of water a lot quicker. So it really speeds up the water change. So, I mean, there's probably about three gallons already in the bucket, spend like 30 seconds. All right, so there's probably about four and a half, five gallons there already drained out. We have our new salt water already mixed up, ready to roll. So we can put this up on top of the tank. Now I'll generally put my hand here just so it doesn't splash and create all kinds of crazy havoc in the tank and just kind of diffuse the water flow. All right, top back off, turn our pumps back on, and we are done. Two minutes, water change, done. So for mechanical filtration, I just use a bit of filter floss. And with that stuff, I bought a giant sheet of this from the fabric store for probably about $8 for two meters. And this is gonna last me, this is probably at least six months I've been doing this now. And I'll just cut off a new chunk and replace it over top of where the filter sock would drain into. And that's gonna filter out any particles of the water, super cheap and keeps maintenance nice and easy. Now on a bit of a random side note, uh, Brightwell makes these bio bricks. So I got up, there's two different kinds. I got the NO3 brick and the bio brick. And I'm gonna use actually that five gallons of salt water I took out and use them to seed these. So they want you to soak it in salt water for 24 hours and also advise adding a bit of beneficial bacteria does help kind of get things flowing. So since we got our bucket of water, I might as well do that now. And I'm gonna add a little bit of turbo start still in the fridge. So I'm going to add that, let them seed it, and they're going to go into the sump of my big tank and I'll help use these to kind of kickstart the future frag tank when I get it set up. Now just to boost the colonies of bacteria, I got a little bit of triple start left over, so add a bit of that to it and it should get it full of life in no time. Now we are low on alkalinity, so let's fill this one up with some fresh solution. So now I'm going to make up 350 mils of alkalinity to retop this off. This container is about 375 mils, so 350 should be close. So we got 350 mil, 350 mils divided by oh, 350 mils divided by 37.85. So that, and that's 9% of the 440 grams. All right, so about 40, 40, 41 grams of powder. Should give us the right amount. All right, so we got approximately 40 grams. Could turn on the magnetic stir. Um, these things are awesome, by the way. I have built some DIY ones, and this is one I just bought off Amazon. Uh, if you guys are interested, I'll throw a link to it in the description below. But it's an extremely easy way to mix your chemicals. Turned up and we let the stir bar do all the work for us.
at a low speed you can see the little cyclone it creates which is kind of cool because it just brings and sucks all the powder to the bottom and if you turn it up it'll actually start sucking in air it's crazy how much torque this little thing has kind of fun but after a couple minutes on the stir you can see the solution is almost clear fully dissolved if you really want you can leave it on a little longer just to finish it off but i think we're in a pretty good place by now so now we can add it to our container Get our container back in and we are good to go again for a while. Now, if the auto top off was low, I'd obviously fill this up as well, but doing so far so good. So pretty quick and easy. And that's, you know, filling these up is something that only happens every four or five months. Those last ages on this little tank. Auto top off, I fill off about once a month. Um, changing the little filter floss stuff, I do that eh, every week or two, maybe every two weeks. So I've had a ton of you ask me to par test the tank recently. Um, I did up the schedule a little bit recently, so I have tweaked it a bit. Um, so it turns on around 10, 20 in the morning, around noon is at its peak and that goes to just past 8 p.m. And it slowly wraps down and at 10 p.m. is completely off. So when it's at its peak, um, currently I have 95% UV, 95% violet, 100%, 106% royal blue, 105% blue, 24% green, 23% red, and 22% cool white. Now, to do an actual part test on it, I'm going to be using the Apogee MQ510. Now this meter is awesome if you have LEDs because it's already tuned to kind of compensate for the blue LED spectrum, which a lot of PAR meters kind of struggle with and give you not necessarily 100% accurate readings. So right at the front here by these two acros, I'm getting 228, 230 PAR. Just above the sunny D's at the top, we got 300. Going over to the edge by the frag rack, got approximately 200. If we come down here to this green acro, getting around 180. Uh, the front of the rock here, we got about 180-ish. If I come to my torch on the side, I got about 130. Come all the way down to the sand bed where the flowers are, kind of in the middle. I'm getting approximately 130 par. Uh, if I come over to this far corner of the sand bed in front of the rocks here, we're getting around 128. Uh, if I look at my little blue purple bonsai, he's getting about 120. Uh, top of the frag rack here is 170. Uh, coming to the back side of the Mikey Tort, we're getting around. 130 or so par. In front of them, we're getting around 230 par. Prior to tweaking my lights, I was closer to 100, so boosted about 20 bar at the sand bed, and probably around 50, 60 par at the top of the tank. So give you guys a little bit of idea of what I got going on with it. So the additives refill, that's something that I only really do every like four or five months. They do last ages at only dosing a few mils a day. Um, I can't even remember the last time I did. So we did that, got our water change done. That literally took minutes. Um, filter floss done, all the maintenance is done. So maintaining a nano tank is actually really easy. Um, now that, that all the hard work is done, let's dive in and take a look at some corals. Coming in right down at the top, we got the good old OG Sunny Ds. These guys are a classic. Love the texture and that, especially with like the macro and close-up shots. They just look so cool. It's such a nice splash of color in the tank. Uh, up to these, these, I believe these are called Armor of God or Devil's Armor or something like that. Um, those guys are the Magicans. Come up, unknown little green acro. These ones are blueberry bush or blueberry tree, something along those lines. That one's actually pink Cadillac, even though it's super green right now. So in my other tank is purple. This one, the colors completely changed. So I'm curious how that changes over time. This is another favorite of mine. That's the Palmer's Blue Millipora. Um, it's more baby blue in my other tank. This one is more of a purpley blue, but it's starting to get those kind of tealy blue polos back out. And down below it, we got some pink lemonade. That one's a classic. Uh, another stag and the rainbow monty so super cool the colors but this is the punk that kind of was stinging my scully so i moved him out to the other tank come around to the side we have uh scrambled eggs so this is another one i've been on a bit of a quest for yellow coral so that's a really nice one picked up at i believe i actually got that at magna in vegas last year the jason fox acid reflux so another really cool one and this one i think it was called jungle juice so kind of nice little colors on it. Coming in, checking out some of the rock flowers. I absolutely love all the crazy textures on these guys. They just look like little underwater flowers. They're absolutely beautiful. So 
I am stoked to have a tank just absolutely full of these one day once there's babies and they spawn and they'll eventually be all over the tank. Coming up the rock, we got a few that are starting to sneak up there in with some of the zoas. So those are the utter chaos and nice little contrast of a green rock flower there. This guy was one of my original babies, so he's actually getting to be a decent size. He's probably getting closer to about a dime, so that's some pretty good growth on him. Uh, it's closed up at the moment, but that's a fat head dendro. So dendros are really cool. They're kind of like sun corals, but they're open more and they're a lot easier to feed. And right beside that, we've got pink hippo, which is another really cool zoa. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that kind of update on the Red Sea Max Nano. Um, this is slowly turning into a straight up rock flower tank. Um, eventually I may even take out more stuff and move it to over to the big tank and then just make this 100% rock flower, but time will tell. Um, super happy with it, really easy tank, low maintenance, uh, overall I love it. Uh, the other thing I didn't want to cover is there is a power head in here. I do have the Nero 5 which is hiding along the back wall. So you barely even notice it in there, but it provides pretty good flow. Uh, I'm only running at about 15 or so percent, so it's really low, just enough to keep everything in the tank rocking and everything else happy. All right, guys, if you enjoyed this, as always, hit that like button. If you're new, make sure you subscribe, hit that bell, and I'll see you guys on the next video.